Hello, this is Ron Paul with your weekly update for August 6th. Last week, the House passed yet another bill placing sanctions on Iran and Syria, bringing us closer to another war in the Middle East. We are told that even harsher sanctions finally will force the targeted nations to bend to our will. Yet the effectiveness of previous sanctions teaches us nothing. In truth, sanctions lead to war more than they prevent war. Until last year, Libyan sanctions were touted as a great success story. The regime would change its behavior, yet NATO bombed the country anyway. Last week, we learned that President Obama signed an intelligence finding directing the CIA to covertly assist rebels in Syria. The administration seemed determined to fight yet another war in Syria that has nothing to do with American national interests. We already know that a similar finding was signed under the latest Bush administration directing U.S. intelligence to undermine the Iranian government and promote regime change there. Neoconservatives have long demanded that we overthrow the Syrian government before moving on to war against Iran. This bellicosity continues regardless of which party is in the White House. In Syria, we once again see how our interventionist policies backfire and make us less secure. Recent news reports point to ties between the Syrian opposition and al-Qaeda and other extremist groups. A recent article in The Guardian, a British newspaper, exclaimed that, quote, al-Qaeda turns tide for rebels in battle for eastern Syria, close quote. The article quotes an al-Qaeda leader in Syria saying that he meets with the main U.S.-backed Syrian rebel organization, the Free Syrian Army, almost every day. So by promoting civil war in Syria, we end up fueling al-Qaeda. According to another recent press report, German intelligence services estimate that nearly 100 terrorist attacks have been committed by al-Qaeda or related organizations in Syria over the past six months. Last month, a suicide bomber in Syria killed a defense minister and several top government officials. The U.S. government, which has been fighting a war on terror for more than a decade now, refused to condemn that act of terrorism. This raises the question on whether the U.S. administration is supporting the same people in Syria that we have been fighting in Iraq and Afghanistan. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton expressed these same concerns earlier this year when asked whether the U.S. has been reluctant to arm the Syrian rebels. She answered, to whom are we delivering them? We know al-Qaeda, Zawahiri, is supporting the opposition in Syria. Are we supporting al-Qaeda in Syria? That's a very good question. It clearly demonstrates that the United States has no business at all being involved in the Syrian civil war. In the 1980s, we supported a resistance movement in Afghanistan that later gave birth to elements of al-Qaeda and the Taliban. When will we learn our lesson and stop intervening in conflicts we don't truly understand? Conflicts that have nothing to do with American national interests. Thanks for calling. This written text of this update can be found on my website, www.house.gov/paul, under the heading Texas Straight Talk. Thanks for calling.